Hi, algebra students. Today we're taking a look to see if something represents a function or not. So first we have a function rule does not always have to be numerical in nature. They simply have to return a single output for a given input. The table below gives a rule that takes it as an input a neighborhood childhood and gives an output the month he or she was born. Why can we consider this rule a function? So if we take a look at this, we can consider this one a function because Max is only paired with one birthday month. Evan is only paired with one birthday month. Zeke only has one birthday month. Rosie only has one birthday month. And Nico only has one birthday month. So it follows the idea of each input only having one output or each element of the domain only having one element of the range, which makes sense. You cannot be born in more than one month. So we can say, since each person only has one birthday month. Okay, and then what is the output when the input is rosy? So if the input is rosy, the output is February. Then it says C, find all inputs that give an output of May. So Zeke is May and so is Nico, okay? And why does this not violate the definition of a function even though there are two answers? And it's because there is still only one range value for each domain value. Or in other words, it's okay to have multiple outputs as long as they're paired with different inputs, okay? So like a quadratic function, we can have two of the same outputs, but they're paired with different input values. For example, when we see something like this, okay, the output of zero is paired twice, but maybe with negative five and positive one, that's allowed, okay? But we couldn't have negative five be paired with a zero and with a four, that's not allowed. All right, so hopefully this is making some sense to you. You're gonna try number two all on your own. All right, number three. In each of the following examples, use an input output chart to decide if the following relation is a function. So for A, consider the following relationship. Multiply the input by five and then subtract seven to get the output. All right, so if I do five times the input, which is x, and then subtract seven, five times negative three is negative 15 minus seven is negative 22. If I do five times zero minus seven, I get zero minus seven is negative seven. And if I do five times six minus seven, I get 30 minus seven is 23. All right, so is that a function? Yes, it's a function because each input only has one output. Now over here, there's no calculation. I have negative two paired with four, three paired with three, and three again paired with two. So this is not a function because the input of three has more than one output. So you're gonna try C and D on your own. All right, now last we have, based on the graph of the function y equals g of x shown below, answer the following questions. Evaluate each of the following. So we have g of negative two. Well, g of negative two is when x is negative two. So x is negative two is here. So the y value is at negative three. g of zero is here, and it's paired with negative three again g of 3 is here paired with positive 4 and g of 7 is here and that's paired with 0. 
what values of x solve for the equation g of x equals 0. These are also called the roots. So we know the roots. We've seen roots before. This is actually what we call a polynomial function. So all the roots are the one where it crosses the x-axis, which are these points here. So we have x equals negative 3, x equals 1, 5, and 7. Explain why this does or does not represent a function. And this is a function. because it passes the vertical line test. And each element of the domain is only paired with one element of the range. And just to keep in mind, this is actually something you might see on the regents where they want you to see if you can tell us the equation that matches this. So just look at the roots. A possible equation could be x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 5 times x minus 7. And why is that possible? Because if I set those all equal to 0, I get the roots from this graph. All right, so that's something to think of. You can always find a possible equation just by looking at the roots of the quadratic or of the curve that is given. All right. So you guys are done. Please complete any of the parts that were in the video that I didn't do with you. Oh my God.